Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the books that I read in May. I did manage to read five books this month and unfortunately I did end up DNFing one book but we'll get to that soon. The first book I read in May was A Darker Shade of Magic by B.E. Schwab. This is actually a reread and I did rate it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I am rereading the series in preparation for the new series that I was releasing called The Threads of Power. Getting back into this world was quite easy and it was really fun to read about familiar characters again and I really had a blast rereading this. In this book, there are four parallel worlds that are connected through the city of London and these worlds have different levels of magic. For example, our world, Earth, is known as Grey London, which is magicless, and then there's also Red London, White London, and Black London. Rare magicians called Antari are the only ones who can traverse these worlds, and we follow our protagonist, Kel, who is an Antari from Red London who acts as an ambassador between all the Londons. Kel is also a smuggler enthusiast and this ends up with him one day running into Violet Bard. That results Kel and his new pickpocket friend to go on wild adventures across all these Londons. The writing in this book is quite easy to follow. We have many multiple characters that are really easy to love. We have Kel who has a good head on his shoulders and struggles with his love for his brother. We have Lila who is witty, fearless, and has a knack for pirate adventures. Another character we follow is Holland and he is another Antari from White London. He's very morally gray, he's very powerful, and one of my favorite characters in the entire series. I also like the different types of cultures that each London has and brings to the table is all very unique. And we also have villains that are bloodthirsty and cruel. And I really do think A Darker Shade of Magic series is a very good introduction if you're curious about getting into adult fantasy books because it's very easy to consume and the concepts aren't really out there. And honestly, I'm really excited to continue rereading the series. Next, I read The Aloy of Law by Brennan Satterson and this one I rated a 4 out of 5 stars. This is the first book in the second era Mistborn series that takes place 300 years after the original Final Empire series. In Aloy Law, we still follow the same magical system that we have in the original trilogy, which is where our characters can ingest metals and that grants them some superhuman abilities. First impressions going into this book was that I was very impressed by how Brandon Sanderson intermingled modern technology with his magical system. It was very smooth and easy to read that difference from the original series. I love getting to know our new characters and how their dynamics are, but I did feel like this book was a lot of setup for the rest of the series, which makes sense because it is a first book in a series. Our protagonist is Waxilium, and I do refer to him as Wax even when reading his full name in the book. He is a type of character that is haunted by his past, but he does whatever he can to move forward. There's also someone named Wayne who is like a brother to Wax and they have really fun crime busting adventures that they go on and I love their dynamics. Like in any other Sanderson book, there is explosive action and magical mayhem and I'm very excited to see where this new series does take us. Next, I picked up a contemporary romance and this is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker and I read this one a 2 out of 5 stars. I first heard this book from Bookstagram a while ago and I'm just finally getting around to it. I know usually hate to love romances can be quite popular and when done right, it's really addicting to read. In the case of Simple Wild, we're following Kala from Toronto who goes to visit Alaska in order to see her dying father. On the way to Alaska, Kala runs into Jonah who is a pilot in her father's airliner company and things just kick off from there but I think the downfall for this book for me was the love interest Jonah and my particular reasons for that was because he kept on picking on Kala for her appearance and also for not really believing her dairy allergy. There's a lot of little nitpicky stuff that kept on being brought up. He also hides her suitcases at one point. So I just felt it was a little bit manipulative at some points. 
they did have really good chemistry but i felt that wasn't enough to compel me to really like the love interest <laughs> although i really did like the part of this book that did focus on kala and her father's relationship and repairing that relationship it was very endearing but then becomes very sweet because her father is ill but i didn't like how there was a lot of blame put on Kala for not really reaching out to her father when her father didn't reach out to her in turn and also how Kala's story is eventually like a repeat of what her parents story was overall there were some things in this book that did not work out for me and I did hope that it was otherwise but this book did end up disappointing me now onto the next book and this is The Witch King by Martha Wells. This is the book that I unfortunately DNF'd at around the 15% mark. We're following Kai who is a demon from the underworld who has been quote unquote assassinated but one day he wakes up from a deep slumber when someone tries to steal his magic and Kai wakes up and he's now trying to figure out what happened to him to get to that point. This is the type of slow burn fantasy that really just tosses you into the action of it all. And I think when I picked up Witch King, I was not in the right mood for this book. And my attention span was waning when trying to read through the first couple of chapters. I think it's safe to say for Witch King that you do need to be very attentive to the unfamiliar terms as well as the many characters that are being introduced to us. I also felt like the writing was somewhat stale for me and I think I am just wasn't in the mood for this type of book but I think I will eventually get back to Witch King someday in the future. The next book that I did pick up was Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros and I rate this one a 4 out of 5 stars and I did recently upload a reading vlog for this video so if you're interested in that, I will link that down below. This book takes place at a college for dragon riders and we're following 20 year old Violet Soaringale who is entering this college. However, there are a limited number of dragons to bond and that results in a fierce and deadly competition. And it doesn't help that Violet is actually the daughter of the general and that paints a huge target on her back, especially for wing leader Zayden. First impressions going to fourth wing was that this was a romance fantasy, but it ends up that this is just a normal fantasy in that the romance aspect is just a subplot. There are other elements that take center stage in this book that I really loved, including dragons and how they bond to their writers. This was one of the parts of the book that really grabbed my attention and I had a blast learning about the dragon society as well as how brutal this war college can be. And also there's touched upon about how chronic pain can impact the character's life and that is our protagonist Violet. She deals with I think brittle bones. She easily dislocates her joints a lot so she deals with that throughout the entire book and we see how that impacts her trying to become a dragon rider. I do like how Violet doesn't let her chronic pain, chronic illness to hold her back from giving her all in the rider's quadrant because she actually was supposed to become a scribe but then she's forced into the rider's quadrant by her mother and she uses her knowledge to her advantage with knowing a lot of stuff about history of her country that's a really huge strength of hers that she took full advantage of on the romance front i will keep it quite short zayden is my love interest of choice and he's actually quite helpful to violet compared to dane who is the childhood best friend and who is very very overprotective and stifling to Violet. I also have to mention when I first started to read this book, it did feel like it was a lot of a YA type of fantasy writing, but then the very graphic descriptions just push it to become an adult book. Honestly, I love dragons and they were my favorite part of the book and I really liked how the dragons are very elusive themselves and very protective of their draconic society. I'm very excited to see where the sequel will take us. Those were all the books that I read this month. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and maybe added a book or two to your own TBR and I hope you all had a wonderful day and I also hope you can give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. 
and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.